if your instinct is to harm me, as a person simply trying to de-escalate a conflict, then I'll have to assume of the two of you, you are likely the primary aggressor. In which case, I think everyone in this town would agree the force is justified. Unless you willingly stand down now. Ball dwellers. Oh, it is so good, just as it looks right here. Iconic video game franchise Fallout has branched out into a series streaming now on Prime Video. It's a tale of the battle between the haves and have-nots set in futuristic Los Angeles after a apocalyptic nuclear meltdown. Sounds like a nightmare, doesn't it? Well, it's a lot of fun, actually. Joining us now for a look at what's in store for the series is star Ella Purnell. Welcome, my dear. Hi. You are so fantastic in this show. Thank but you. let's first talk about the fact that Fallout Fallout, the video game itself, has such a huge following, right? And it's got this huge fan base. And it's one of those video games where you kind of create your own character, so you don't really have like actual faces. Or So what was that pressure like for you to step in, knowing that there's this huge following, and then to be the beautiful face of it? Well, thank you, first of all, <laughs> very kind. Um, there's, it's definitely a lot of pressure because you don't want to mess it up. You yeah. know, you really want to do the source material justice and the, like you said, the fans are so passionate and, and yeah. rightfully so because the games are fantastic. Yeah. Um, at the same time, my character doesn't exist in the game, so I had a little bit of creative freedom. Yes, I, I guess that's where it kind of got a little bit fun for you creatively as well. But for people who don't know the actual video mm -hmm. game, um, how would you describe this in a nutshell of what Fallout is about? It's so hard to describe because they're... I mean, you've seen it. There's so many elements. So it's, many. It's you know, it's dark. It's obviously apocalyptic, but it's funny and it has yeah. heart. I would say, it's a post-apocalyptic show like you've never seen before, and yeah. there is something for everyone. There really is. There's there's like friendship aspect to it, family aspect yes. to it. Um, love the mother, uh, sorry, the father and daughter relationship. Like so many different angles to it. Yeah. I know you've actually talked a little bit about this too with people asking you the fact that you take on a lot of uh, roles that uh, it's about survival. Yeah. But I have to ask, how are you surviving in this industry, girl? How are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I am. <laughs> I'm just kind of going with the, the motion of the ocean right now. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I, I've been doing this a long time and I just I can't believe how lucky I am to you know still be here and working and yeah. you know um, I feel very grateful yeah for people who don't know what I'm referring to um, where Ella is also in the show Yellow Jackets which is like you seem to really come on shows that just do really really well like what's the magic touch there girl I don't know you know my agent texted me yesterday she was like I gotta get you away from cannibalism <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> how this became a thing I guess I think I'm just really interested in survival dramas you know yeah. really seeing a human at the end of you know the end of their rope at the yeah. very brink of what humans are capable of exploring that yeah. especially as a woman where you get to play desperate that's just it's it fun. that's just it and powerful women yeah. right powerful women well, watching the strength these... come out exactly people that maybe don't even know they're capable of it don't it's even so know they true. have it it's really fun. um i hear that of course part of the show was also filmed in africa and yeah. one of the castmates was bit by this ridiculous spider like five times I've, this is what I've heard. Um, Walton. Walton was apparently like. Did you have any? I didn't know this. Yeah, like this, and this is not like an e like a just like your little spider. I mean, it's in Africa too. Like, there's some deadly spiders out there. But like, yeah. did you have any interesting encounters? No, no I'm glad spiders. you found that. Did not know about this. It can I you didn't imagine? know anything about this, and I'm really glad I didn't. <laughs> I know. I would have been freaking out every night as well. Wow. What was that like though, filming in Africa? Not a lot of times, you know, actors get opportunities to actually travel and go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We're so different. We were so lucky. We filmed the bulk of it in New York. I love yeah. New York. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we went to Africa. We filmed in Namibia uh, on the Skeleton Coast. Amazing. I actually got to go to this really remote location. It's this abandoned shipwreck in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And we took a four-hour helicopter ride, just wow. eight of us, wow. to go to this shipwreck. And it was beautiful like the most insane thing I've ever seen that actually does sound magical but hey really quickly fans are also in for a treat today because you are in town for a little <gasps> pop-up right. tell us about this pop-up I haven't seen it yet okay. but I'm hearing rumors of a 10-foot rad roach okay on oh. a shipping container oh my gosh is that right this I can't is it. wait this is it right here we're actually showing oh. it to everybody and this activation is taking place at 2 30 today 
Uh, listen, Ella, it's been an honor having you here. Congratulations on this incredible show, Fallout. I can't wait to continue watching it and how it all falls through and falls out. Get it? <laughs> Get no, it? I'm, I'm a queen <laughs> of puns here. Um, Ella, have fun this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy the rain, and you can stream Fallout right now as well. All right, well, with the eclipse on everyone's mind today, you may need a quick and easy dinner recipe to make after being outside this afternoon. Luckily for you, Shauna Thomas, friend of the show, nutrition consultant, she's here today with three recipes you can make from one store-bought rotisserie chicken or one that you made from scratch at home. Sure. Whatever. But I mean, for me, I'm buying that chicken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes, or I find most mm -hmm. of the time now, buying the already cooked store-bought right. is cheaper than getting a All raw chicken, things. right? Yes, so for sure. um, it's easy, it's convenient, and so delicious, mm -hmm. right? Who doesn't love a rotisserie chicken? Absolutely. Um, so, Shauna, the first yeah. one today, I'm so intrigued by this because mm -hmm. I was speaking to Courtney and she's like, oh, Meghan Markle made it for yeah. Prince uh, Harry. Yeah. Marry me chicken. What is this? Yeah. So this is sort of a TikTok sensation, okay. right? Um, and the premise is that whoever you make it for is going to propose to you because it is that good. <laughs> okay. And you know what? I'm already married, happily married, so I don't need anybody to propose to me. Uh, so I actually it. lightened this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I used evaporated milk instead of heavy cream. Mm. Um, you know, I added in some spinach and some onions because I can't help myself. I like to have those extra veggies. Yeah. But the sun-dried tomatoes mm. are what really make it here. It is so delicious. And the original recipe, you cook the chicken in the pan and then make the sauce in that pan. Yeah. But this, I just added in the breast from the rotisserie chicken and Yum. then spoon sort of the sauce on top of it. And it is so ridiculous. Oh my God, it's like a pasta chicken. Yeah. What? And you could serve it on pasta, right? It's you could so serve delicious. it on pasta on rice to soak up mm. all that delicious sauce. Oh my gosh. So, so good. So this one definitely is a keeper. I'm going to be making that one. So quite delicious. A bit. Mm -hmm. You can see how it goes with so many things. Okay, yeah. next up, we've got a chicken salad using apples, I see. Right? Yeah, so this is an apple cranberry chicken salad. So we've already used the chicken breasts and the Mary Me chicken. You use the legs and the thighs and shred them up for mm -hmm. this one. Um, and like I said, in you know the name of the recipe, if there's apples, there's cranberry, there's onion. I use half mayonnaise, half Greek yogurt, because <laughs> you know I've got to use Greek yogurt. Um, and then you just add it all together, a little celery for crunch. Um, and the dressing is really easy. I added a little curry powder, lemon mm, juice, uh, salt and pepper to taste. So it's a really simple one to make. Um, but a great one to use up that shredded chicken yes. uh, from that rotisserie chicken. And it is so fresh and delicious, right? It has that savory, that sweet, all of that good oh, stuff. Totally. You could have it on lettuce leaves, in a sandwich, on a cracker, like a you wrap, right here. Anything. A wrap, anything. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Perfect it's thing to make. Really, okay. really nice. And mm -hmm. lastly, we've got this chicken noodle soup, which just looks really delicious. I love the, the curly noodle going yeah. on Yeah. So this one's really easy. I make it all the time. And this is what you're going to use all the bones for. So ah. the bones and all the scraps of the chicken that are left. And you put mm. it in a pot. You boil it. I boil it for like almost an entire day okay. uh, just to make the broth as well. So yeah. you don't even have to buy the broth. Carrot, celery, onion, pasta, chicken. Super easy, really simple. And all of these recipes and videos to show you how to do it too are going to be on my Instagram, Shauna Thomas Nutrition. Nutrition. So you can find it all there this week. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you took th like three very different recipes from one whole chicken. One chicken, That's yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Shauna, thank you so much for simplifying my our pleasure. lives on this eclipse day. <laughs> hey, happy eclipse viewing with happy your kids eclipse. today because yeah. they're off school, right? Uh, they will be this afternoon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be really fun. Thanks so much, Shauna. We'll Thanks. see you again next week. I feel like just got a lot, a lot of hope in my opinion. Mm. A little more sauce, and this will be super high. It's got the most flavor I've had in a long time. I wish there's cheese sauces in the middle was everywhere. Because the parts that don't have a cheese sauce, it's just... All right, Keith Lee there, popular TikTok food critic, making a surprise stop in the city as part of his tour across the continent in search of the best local food joints. He stopped at three establishments locally, creating major buzz. Two of those three lucky ones are Afro's Pizza, owned by Rodney Best, and the shop manager at Biscuits and Baskets, Victoria Flegel. Join us live here on CB24 Breakfast. Of course, that video of Keith Lee, Rodney, of course, was he was talking about your mac and cheese at your restaurant. Uh, what did you take from that tip that he had about you know spreading the the sauce and the cheese around a little more? Are you gonna are you gonna change it up a bit now? This was something that I've been looking at for a long time is how do we make it more moist instead of making yeah. it more dry? So it's like right. it's just a matter of training my staff accordingly at how do we want to okay. get that out there. So more. it was a fair criticism then. Obviously. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay, yeah. well that's good. Uh, Victoria, let's talk about this, and I'm gonna get into this with you as well, Rodney. Of course, but the the the, the Lee the Keith Lee effect. Yeah. 
the significance of this to the restaurant, your, your, your bakery really, I suppose, like what does this mean? Bottom line. Oh, it means a lot to our family. Um, we already had a decent amount of uh, local and um, mm. loyal customers as well. So we're very excited to see a lot more new faces coming in and stuff. And obviously, um, we're excited to see the business maybe take off a little bit and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Rodney, I'm sure you had a similar experience. How quickly did you start seeing the new faces, the more customers start oh, showing up at your the doors? Same night. Yeah? Oh, yeah, the same night. Once he left, uh, he gave away free pizza to everyone for three hours. Oh, wow. So uh, we had crowds lined up right away. Yeah, that is that is remarkable. And, you know, we were just in Crystal Beach yesterday talking about the difficulties for local businesses coming out of the pandemic here. For restaurants, we know how hard you were hit during the pandemic. How significant is this kind of a boost to your business and your maybe even your overall attitude? Well, as far as what we were looking at, like, yeah, we were fine dining chefs. We can't open a restaurant like that in this ton of days. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, pizzeria was like the best choice for us to do. And because we do fine dining, we want to still apply that same effect mm -hmm. to the pizzas itself, too. So it has been helping our business a lot by doing that. Same question to you, Victoria. You talk about being a family-run business. Mm -hmm. We know how significantly harmed businesses were. What, what is this, like, how, do, how did your family comprehend this now? Um, we're definitely all in shock, very overwhelmed. Um, but we're very excited to see what comes of it. Um, and we just hope that we can keep serving our community as we have been doing. And mm -hmm. like I said, meeting a lot of more uh, new faces and stuff. Social media is such an interesting thing for this generation. I mean, when, when I went to university, we were talking about the break. A lot of people saying, oh, I wish I had this when I was in school. But it's a whole new world in terms of getting your message out there. And it seems like this TikTok generation has changed everything. Mm -hmm. Do you think about that for your own businesses when putting it out there or do you, in terms of collaboration or thinking about it? Or do you just kind of put it out there and hope that someone runs away with it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's how we ran our business. Uh, we didn't actually have enough money for marketing, so we're just like, you know, we'll just trust in the food hmm. and let it market itself. And then that's when we have the influencers, food bloggers, everyone started coming by on their own accord, and it, that's how our business has been moving since. Yeah, same for us. Yeah, and yeah. It, it works. It's it's and it, it's not just the generation of the TikTok. That kind of feeds over because, you know, you have yeah. kids, yeah, everything. Exactly. Yeah. It's Cool. Can I ask, this was a complete surprise, right? Mm, yes. Were either of you there when Keith Lee walked in, and did you know that was Keith Lee, and what was the reaction? I mean, I was in the middle of my service, and we didn't even know he had dropped by already. Okay. He was already there an hour before. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. He was there an hour before, and then once he came in, like, nobody noticed because everyone was just busy trying to get pizzas out as fast as they possibly yeah. could. Yeah, um, we didn't know who Keith Lee was, to be honest. Uh -huh. um, his family had come in initially into the shop, yeah. and then he had come back afterwards because his family was saying, um, my stepdad just gave them really nice customer service and stuff. Yeah. Um, and he was in complete shock as well. He, we had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the other side to this too is the tips. Uh, do you care to share that like, he left some pretty significant tips at both of your establishments? Yes, yeah. Yeah. What are we talking about here? Uh, it was three grand for us. Uh, uh, yeah. He dropped a three grand tip. Uh, he also tipped on top of that, and that tip that he wanted us to use it for the customers to actually have free pizza for the night. Right. Yeah. We actually and ended up giving up a thousand dollars in pizza. Whoa. Amazing. Yeah. And I was um, asking you a little bit about upscaling because it, well, you know once you draw the attention, you're gonna, you're gonna get not just a lot of people, probably a lot of influencers coming in, and this is this could sometimes go viral and just go. Is there the ability to take what you have and, and get it out to the people who will now want it? Yeah, we are. We have a two. We had a two to three year plan to actually expand our business. Um, we just wanted to make sure we got the traction. We had solid footing before we did that because we didn't want to just explode and then like we didn't have a setup plan for us. But yeah, the, the uh, we might end up having to do it a lot sooner than we expected. And what about you, Victoria? How will you try to capitalize on this with your business as well? Um, we're just going to keep pushing forward. We're going to get a um, better coffee machine as well, so we can okay. accommodate more people. Yeah. Um, um, but we just hope to keep up the same pace and just keep serving people what as we were, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, Rodney, Victoria, thanks for coming in. This is just oh, absolutely fantastic. The proof is in the pudding. I think, yeah, right? we're going to have to sample something here just to, you know, make sure Keith Lee isn't wrong because, you know, we're such crew food critics. But uh, I'm going to tuck into this. Bill's going to go for the sweet stuff. Oh, this I know is it. I like this anyway, just, this Rodney, Victoria, incredible. thank you so much. Congratulations on this, and I hope this uh, really leads to some more success. Thank, thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. States have seceded. The United States Army ramps up activity. The White House issued warnings to the Western forces as well as the Florida Alliance. The three-term president assures the uprising will be dealt with swiftly. Let me know if you want to try anything on. I guess I'm aware there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news. Seems like it's for the best. 
set against the backdrop of a near future America is a radical new film. It's a new kind of war movie, really. Civil War is an action thriller that explores the possibilities of a brutal conflict laying waste to a country that couldn't see it coming. Movies and theaters Friday, but joining us live now this morning is the writer and director Alex Garland. Alex, really appreciate you being here to talk about Civil War. Uh, this movie had an impact on Bill and our producer Meredith and I as we watched it. What were you hoping to get across when you created this idea in your mind and then and then brought it to life on screen? Um, uh, I'm going to say, in that little intro, you said, couldn't see it coming. I think we can see it coming. <laughs> mm. I mean, I, I think there's been a worry about the way extremist populist politics and the erosion of trust in the media, which is a great check and balance against mm -hmm. that stuff, we, all, we fear it. And we can see it yeah. coming in at the edges. And January the 6th felt like the sort of... Uh, I don't know, like a little shadow in the horizon that could lead to something really bad. I, I think some of us can see it coming, but some people, I think, want to put blinders on or just want to sort of follow a leader and think, no, everything's okay if we do this. Uh, and it's interesting you mentioned January 6th, because my understanding, Alex, is that you wrote this movie prior to January 6th, which I find January 6th, to me, made this movie seem much more possible. Yeah, but honestly, if you cast your mind four years back, we were all worried about the same thing, and January the 6th crystallized it. Mm -hmm. um, but people were afraid of January the 6th before January the 6th happened. January the 6th didn't come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I thought about the movie. The first thing that struck me about it was, if this movie had come out a decade ago, I don't think it would have seemed or felt as powerful. Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on I don't think timing? it would have, personally, I don't think it would have occurred to me to write it mm -hmm. a decade ago. But something something has changed. It's changed in America. It's actually changed in my country. It hasn't so much changed in your country, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Keep it that way if you possibly can. Yeah. Uh, but there's lots of European countries, my country, Middle Eastern, Asian, South American countries that really have a significant problem with a divided state which is just growing increasingly divided and increasingly angry, both sides having so much anger. So there's, and then there's this sort of centrist group which are non-extremists, but they get quieter and quieter as, as more and more noise is occupied by these extremes and, and suddenly uh, things start getting weird and things are a bit weird. Very strange. The story is told from the perspective of a small group of journalists who are yeah. trying to get to D.C. to interview the president, you know, uh, after he's, you know, gotten rid of the FBI, etc. Mm -hmm. here. Why did you decide to use sort of journalism as the sort of vehicle to tell your story? Uh, because I am absolutely done with the way journalists are getting vilified by the, uh, sometimes by themselves, but certainly by politicians and also by the public. And um, journalists are like doctors. You actually need journalists. It's not like it's nice to have journalists. If you don't have them, you're removing a check and a balance against governments who will become corrupt at some point. That does ha pretty much always happen at some point. So you... You, you need them, and say in my country, I was aware BBC journalists who were basically very benign, right? You could, they could turn up at a demonstration in their own country or another country and get physically attacked. And there's just something crazy about that. And I thought, no, I've, I'm, I'm not playing this game. I'm going to make journalists the heroes. Because I like journalists. Well, <laughs> thank you for saying that. As a journalist sitting across from me, I do appreciate that, Alex. I want to say, you know, it was interesting watching the movie here in Toronto. Obviously, it's a group of Canadian journalists. And there's a very funny scene we're going to play a clip of here because it's about, you know, Canadian money, et cetera. And it, it's, not a, it's not a funny movie, but this uh, quick scene got a laugh. So I want to play this, and then we'll quickly discuss that. What's over the odds? 300 for half a tank and two cans. <laughs> 300 buys you a sandwich. We got ham or cheese? 300 Canadian. So right now, that does not seem to get a laugh, but I can tell you at the screening I was at with a bunch of Canadian journalists and film critics, it did get a bit of a chuckle here. Good. But the contrast was really, you know, interesting. I think people are going to enjoy that part of it, too, because we all think of Americans as having the greatest money. But it really shows how the country was tearing itself apart. Uh, you know, these different factions, whether it's the Florida faction or the sort of Western faction yeah. as well. It just, it really, it, it, it's a movie, Alex, that's stuck in my head so much. Well, uh, I appreciate that. I mean, that's great. I, I really wanted a, a kind of, like a thriller story, a compelling, engaging thriller story 
that then could lead to a conversation and thought processes and uh, stick with you in some part. Because you're not taking sides in this film. There are kind of allusions I to certain things. Are sides. you? Okay, because I didn't feel I that am, you were. I, I am taking sides, but it's not. It's not a left-right side. Mm. It's an anti-insanity side. Okay. That, that yeah. is actually a side. Yeah. Being being oppositional to polarized political states, that that is a side. I can see why it doesn't look like one, but it is. That's a fair point, and and I do understand that because yeah, it's like it's a definitely a loud warning shot, and especially if you see it in an IMAX, you feel like you're surrounded by gunfire at certain points. Listen, Alex Garden, uh, pardon me, Alex Garland. Good luck with this film. Civil War opens on Friday, of course, the anniversary of the. Uh, Let's hope only civil war that yeah. actually hits America. Appreciate your time this morning. Thanks, man. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Great conversation. Thank you very much. Jen. Wow, Nick, Alex, thank you. What a great conversation. And now, viewers, for your final chance to win a pair of tickets to see Civil War in IMAX this Friday, all you need to do is send your name, email, and phone number to now at cp24.com. Remember to include your name, email, phone number. Once again, now at cp24.com. And the code word, movie, once more. Send your name, email, phone number to now at cp24.com. That code word is movie. Good luck, and we'll be right back after this. Are you American? I've got family I can lean on and friends that have my back. Buddy, there's been more than a time or two. This train's run off the tracks. I can be a pain in the glass. More empty than. Pride and joy of Mild May, Ontario. I know well, drive through it all the time. Owen Riegling is having a great start to 2024. Kudos from Spotify and Amazon performing at the NHL All-Star Weekend. And now, a new song and debut EP and tour to celebrate some of the small town uh, in Canada. It's quite the mouth mouthful. Uh, welcome to you, Owen Riegling, uh, to CP24 Breakfast. And uh, boy, we were just kind of naming off some of the accolades so far. And it feels like uh, you're on a rocket ship through the musical universe right now. Yeah. You know, everyone sometimes thinks this is easy, but it's not. There's, there's sweat, there's tears, there's a lot that goes into making something look simple. Tell me a little bit about the highlights on this current rise you're on and maybe some of the work you put into getting there and making it look so easy. Totally. Well, first of all, thank you for having me in. This is, this is it's great. Um, yeah, the last couple of years have been very fun and, and fast paced and just a bit of a whirlwind, um, you know, getting to play shows and, and go on tours and, um, some stuff I've dreamed about for years and years, so it's cool that it's it's all sort of coming together for me. Nice. Um, yeah, we were on tour with Tyler Hubbard back in the fall across Canada, and that was a very surreal moment for me. Um, you know, getting to be on stage with one of my, one of my sort oh, of cool. heroes that I've sort of looked up to in country music, and, and getting to sing "Cruise" with him every night. So that that was super cool. And you know, there's been several sort of tours since then, and and music, and yeah, it's just so so exciting. Good way to see the country. Yeah. I Speaking of which, you got the Buckle Up tour uh, starting on May 24th. Uh, the same day you're releasing, uh, or uh, sorry, ending on May 24th, yeah. starting May, May 6th. Don't want to get this wrong. <laughs> but this is, uh, you're hitting a lot of uh, smaller towns and, and a big thing that people ears are going to perk up at free. Free, that's right. <laughs> at a time when we're all kind of struggling with inflation and high interest rates, uh, you get a taste <laughs> and you get to hear country music. I think the way it's meant to be heard in a local bar. That's Talk right. a little bit about this tour and where you're going. Yeah, so. It's my first headlining tour. It's called the Buckle Up Tour. It's presented by Bud Light and it's powered by Live Nation Canada. And we're, and we're like you said, going across Canada. I started in small bars um, for, for years and years, like six or seven years. Um, that's where I cut my teeth and learned how to, you know, play music in the first place and get in front of people. So the last couple I've been on bigger stages in front of bigger audiences and, and it's been a dream come true, but I'm very thankful that you know, I'm able to come back to small towns across the country. We're starting in Fort Mac on May 6th and ending in my hometown of Mile yeah. on the and, 24th. And shout out to Harley's. Shout out to uh, Harley's. Yeah, yeah I'm, always, I'm always supporting Harley's. That's the bar in Mile Bay on the corner of Main Street. I reference it in my song, Old Dirt Roads, in the second verse. Um, but that's, I, so cool. that's where I, I mean, that's where we're ending it, at Harley's. So it'll be very sort of a, you know, just a full circle moment for me. And... Um, yeah, I get to release my EP that night, yeah. which is called Bruce County EP, and, and obviously my album is in Bruce County, and Bruce that's County's where I was a, It's raised. a special place. I, I mean, I traveled with my sister, Southampton. I'm like up there, the lookout. It's just, what speaks to you? What do you want to get through to music to get people to say, you know, come, come visit? Yeah, I mean, if you've listened to any amount of my music, it, it comes through in all of my songs. That's 
I was just telling you before we went on, I, I, I mean, I was raised there just outside of town on a farm, yeah. and I grew up my whole life there, and I've only recently spent time away from there, being on the road and stuff like that, so it's been an adjustment for me not being there all the time. Um, but yeah, I, I talk about, you know, where I was raised and a lot of my songs and the people that I grew up with and my friends and family. I don't think I'd be, you know, sitting here with you today or, or being able to go on tour across the country if it weren't for the support of those people. And they just came out to all those bar shows and supported me. And, you know, everything tastes sweeter, smells better, cleaner air out there. That's right. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic tour, uh, the Buckle Up Tour. And you got your new uh, EP coming out uh, May 24th. We're going to be looking forward to it. Hopefully you'll come back and tell us how it went. Oh, we'll be there. Yeah. Um, tickets go on sale or not on sale, they're free. Tomorrow, 10 a.m., <laughs> buckleuptour.ca. So, oh, yeah. so you register to be... Register, go on buckleuptour.ca and uh, get your tickets and come see us at a bar. It's going to be so much fun. I love fun. it. Henri Thank, Thank you for you being so much. here.